Hey, do you mind? Do you mind if I have one of these cigarettes? Well, it's a bit late, isn't it? Look, I don't mind you smoking my cigarettes occasionally. All I expect is the courtesy of asking. It's OK if that's the way you feel about it. But, Gerald, if you're looking for a showdown... I'm not looking for a showdown, I'm looking for a cigarette. Then have a cigarette! It'd be nice if you smoked your own, but since you don't seem to have any intention of buying any... I haven't got any money to buy my own. I haven't got any money because I haven't got a job. And I haven't got a job because I've got to go to the army. You can find something to fill in your time. Then Pharaoh's son's got a job in a supermarket. There are two guys in my class who managed to get jobs. Nobody wants kids straight out of school. At least they're trying. At least they're not lounging around the house all day, getting on everyone's nerves, making everybody's life... Well, what do you want me to do? Bring it to you on a silver tray? Last one. I'm giving up. Seriously, I'm taking up clean living. Good for you. Have you ever thought of taking up flying? In the Air Force? But I'm going to the Army. You can still apply to the Air Force. <laughs> but you know what it's like. When you apply for the Air Force, they put you in the Navy. You apply for the Navy, they put you in the Air Force. It could be worth a try, though. Mean joining the permanent force, you'd have to sign up for at least ten years. Ten years? Well, what else have you got in mind? What sort of plane do you fly in Korea, Dad? F 86 Sabre. That was a jet, wasn't it? Yeah. I never knew you flew a jet. You must be younger than I thought you were. <laughs> Thanks. I, I thought you flew a Spitfire or a Hurricane. <laughs> I was too young for that war. In fact, I only just made Korea. You know the Flying Cheetahs were the first South African squadron ever to fly jets in action? March, 1953. Before that, it was Mustangs. Ten years is a long time. Ten years is ten years in any job. Oh, look, even if you get into the Air Force, it doesn't mean to say you get to fly. One of the top brass was in the same wing as I was. Fissi Fasahi. He's now Brigadier Fasahi. If I could drop him a line, he might be able to pull a few strings. It's up to you. What's the top speed of a Mirage? The 3E flies at well over 2,000 Ks. <laughs> it's fast, eh? That's why it's such a highly specialized business. Remember, you're, you're also responsible for over six million rands worth of aircraft. Oh, Fasaki owes me a favor. Saved his life once. In Korea? Yeah. Well, how? What happened? It's a long story. Besides, I've got to get to work. OK. I'll write to him tonight. Yeah, thank God. Uh, walk back. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's up? Mitch? What's up? Listen here. A father shouldn't be surprised if he finds he has mixed feelings at times towards his wife and towards his baby. Are you listening, Ted? Yeah. Nevertheless, he can remind himself that his feelings are probably not nearly so churned up as his wife's. Remember that, eh? Especially after the homecoming. She has been through the equivalent of an operation. She has been through an intense glandular change. If it is her first baby, she can't help feeling anxious. Ooh. What it all adds up to is that most women need a great deal of support and comfort 
from their husbands at this time. Operation? Mm hmm And an intense glandular change. Listen to this. Partly, it is practical help. Help with the baby and help with the housework. But even more, it's moral support, patience, understanding, appreciation and affection. See? But why operation? No, it's not really an operation. It says the equivalent of an operation. Like appendix? Yeah. Any bigger. Bigger? But a baby's was much bigger than an appendix, man. Oh. You know what? I asked Dr. de Villiers today if you could be with me when the baby's born. So he said, will Ted be all right? I mean, some guys can't take it. He said, they panic and they throw up, even pass out. I said to him, mm-mm. Ted will be okay. He's tough. So where's the tea? I thought you were making it. Oh, no, man. What do you think I've been reading all that stuff for? You've got to help around the place a little bit. Yeah, but the baby isn't even born yet. It doesn't matter. Now's the time to start. Gerald, I can't find them anywhere. I might have guessed. Oh, Janice phoned. She says she's loving being back at school. So nice being away from you. <laughs> you gonna fetch Gran? Mm, she gets in at four. That's if Donald's managed to get her on the plane. All her life she's been saying, you'll never get me on one of those things. Eh? I said, you'll never get well, me on one of... Well, your dad had the same trouble. Remember, Nelly? Remember <laughs> the time with the apricots? Up and down all night he was. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Oh, Monica Stevens, you know, she spoke to her brother, the architect. He says that you're welcome to go along and talk to him any time you like. What about? About architecture. What it involves. You know, uh, that sort of thing. Like, well, I, I don't really want to be an architect, Mum. Oh, well, you did mention it as a possibility. Yeah. Well, he's made the effort. The least you can do is go along and see him. Oh. Might become a pilot. Dad's written this guy that he knew in Korea. Trying to get me in. Brigadier Vasaki. Yeah, Dad saved his life once. Get you into what? The Air Force. The Air Force? Yeah, instead of the Army. Well, he never said anything to me about that. Hey, did Dad ever tell you about this guy, Pori Potkida? Bullet went right through the cockpit. Knocked off his flying goggles, didn't even touch him. He never talked to me about Korea. Yeah. Yeah, Dad was one of the first Africans ever to fly a jet in action. I never knew that. <sighs> well, I suppose you've got to do your military training, whatever happens. So it doesn't make much difference whether it's the Army or the Air Force. Oh, I've got a fly. Fly. <laughs> so, Adele, when's the big day? The sooner, the better. Friday, isn't it? Didn't Dr. De Villiers say he was going to be born on Friday? No, but I tell you, this baby's in no hurry. Oh, well, if it's late, it's a boy. They're always late, and they don't change much either. <laughs> you were late when you were born, and you're going to be late for your funeral, too. <laughs> Remember that Mrs. Gibson? Her baby was a week overdue, and what was it? A boy. And the same with Marie Blichnert. Her baby was due in September. It wasn't born till October. And what was it? A boy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you all right? I don't oh. know. What is it? Are you okay? Oh, Jesus. Jesus, phone Dr. Dubillet. Is it the pain starting? Do you think it's the baby? Mm. Here. Here. Take your feet off your weight. Do you want to lie down? Uh -uh. You can lie down. What's the number? How can I phone Dr. Davidovich if I don't know the number? Phone the hospital. But well, how can I phone oh, the hospital see. if I don't know the number? Get a glass of water. You're feeling dizzy. I know just what it feels like. I used to get it when I had a lane. You know, I'd come all over me and then I'd just lie down and then it would all go. Shouldn't I phone for an ambulance? Oh, don't panic, man. Just phone for the ambulance. Gone. What's gone? Whatever it was. You sure you're all right? Do you want glass water? If it's the contraptions. Ugh. Are you all right? Must be a boy. I 
I'm fine. Tata! Welcome back. What's this? Sherry. Eh? Sherry! Sherry, oh, Sherry eh? Enjoy your flight up from East London? The aeroplane. You weren't frightened, were you? It's not like the train. It's a lot faster, though. On the train, they give you breakfast, lunch and supper. All the Air Force gave us was a cup of tea. No, the Airways. Eh? It's not the Air Force, Mom. It's the Airways. And a piece of cake. Well, that's because you came on the afternoon plane. You get a full dinner on the later flight. They give you a paper bag, you know. Do you know what that's for? I said to this gentleman sitting next to me, I said, what's this paper bag for? Do you know what he said? He said to be sick in. Cheers, Mum. I said, what did you say? He said, it's to be sick in. Good luck. Happy days. How are all the family down in East London? And then they come and strap you in. I said to this gentleman, what's all this about? He said, that's to stop you falling out. I said, well, my goodness, if that's what goes on in the Air Force, I'm getting out and taking a train. What's this? Application form for the Air Force. There's also a note in there from Fusaki. I'd say reading between the lines, you've got nothing to worry about. Wouldn't it be nice if just occasionally you pulled a few strings for yourself? One thing I'll say for the Air Force, they've got much nicer toilets. Mom! There's nothing worse than having to go on the train. Nellie, do you remember when we went to East London before the war and your dad had that tummy trouble? My goodness, seems like he was always having tummy trouble. It does, doesn't it? You'd think she'd find some other topic of conversation, eh? Mom, you've had a hard day. Wouldn't you like to go and lie down for a bit? That time it was the apricots, but he wouldn't listen. <gasps> Herbert always knew best. Candidates are flying was bilingual, at least 17 years of age, not older than 25. In possession of a matriculation certificate and be medically fit. Oh, yeah, Fasaki mentioned that. He suggests you have a private medical, just to avoid any possible disappointment. It's a very tough medical, much tougher than the army. I'll have a word with Dr. de Villiers. What's this? All candidates must enter into an agreement with the government in which they undertake to serve for a minimum period of 10 years, notwithstanding the type of appointment they are offered. Did you know this? Yeah, it, it looks like a good decider whether they want a permanent, medium or short service appointment. And 10 years is the shortest? You knew this too? Yeah. Oh, well, thanks very much for telling me. Yeah, look, I think I'm going to go fill these in. That boy needs a haircut. Look, nothing has been decided. He's about to sign up for ten years, and this is the first I hear of He's it. He's not signing up for anything. He's applying, that's all. And what about this old flying buddy of yours? I told Gerald if he was interested in flying, I might be able to help. Help? You're pushing him into it. It was just a suggestion. He doesn't have to go if he doesn't want to. Just because flying an aeroplane is your idea of fun. It's his choice. He got a good matric. He could go to university. I would be delighted. But in the absence of any suggestion from him, you must forgive me for making a few of my own. And joining the Air Force was the best you could manage. There is nothing wrong with flying. In your opinion. Look, if you want him to go into medicine or, or law or architecture or whatever else you consider to be socially acceptable, that is fine by me, but you persuade him. Well, then give me a chance by not filling his head full of glamorous exploits. What is glamorous Glamorous about... stories of your exploits in Korea. Oh, you're being hysterical. Oh, it's a wonderful lark, isn't it? What better way of reliving your schoolboy fantasies than by joining the Air Force? Put yourself together. Basil, all schoolboys want to be pilots, only most of them grow up. My goodness. It's much more peaceful in East London. We'll class you as a learner official and put you under a shift, boss. Hard work, but well worth it. Nick! Oh, how lovely to see Hello, you. Hello, Mrs. McRae. And what brings you back to Village Reef? Looking for a job. It's just a temporary job. I've got to do six months practical mining as part of my degree. I thought no way better than Billy's week. Oh, agreed. There's a one problem we haven't had to find a solution to. And when are you joining us? Next month. Oh. Extracting the Esmeralda Shaft pillar has been a fascinating exercise. A major feat in mining engineering. Yes, I read your paper on the ancillary excavations. Um, how's Wendy? Oh, she's fine. But what a shame you're joining us in August. Quintus and Vague is the genius behind the pillar. You'll learn a lot from him. Why is that? Why hasn't she told you? Well, I haven't seen her for a while. She's going to England. To England? Ten weeks study tour. Where does she go? Next month. Thank you, darling. Well, Nick, I'm glad you've chosen us. Here's to your being with us on Village Reef. Thank yes, you. Yes, lovely to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I've got a body key. You've got it. Yeah. Fantastic, Pixie. Now, Pete, 
We've got lots of nappies. Ah, uh, but she said you can never have enough. Who said so? The lady in the shop. What's all this? Yeah, I got that too. But we've got lots of blankets too, man. Yeah, but it was a special price. And this? Yeah, she said if I bought the blankets, I could have these a third off. But blues for boys and pinks for girls, man. Yeah, but we don't know what we're going to get yet, do we? What else have you got here? Books. Half price. Toys. Oh, dead man. All I said was go and pick up this carry cot, man. Not by the whole shop. It's not the whole shop. She's still got tons of stuff there. And this? Special price, too. Uh-uh. She gave it to me for free. It's a present for the baby. Ah! Ooh, this is the Mustang over here. We lost 74 of those altogether. Out of 95. A lot of the fellas didn't make it back. How many got killed, Dad? 34 lost in action. This is an old thing, eh? Yeah. It's the old Hawker heart of yours. You wouldn't believe it. They were actually flying these things at the beginning of the Second World War. <laughs> My goodness, I thought, I hope I'm not going to fall out of the aeroplane. <laughs> Uh, Hello, Sally. Hello, Sally. Had a tea party here. Mm. This is Mrs. Roxborough, the chief geologist's wife. Oh, one of the big wigs. Actually, we met last year. Isn't she pretty? Mrs. McNeilis has flown up all the way from East London. By plane. Never been in a plane before. She was telling us all about it, all the details. I said to this gentleman next to me, is it safe in there? I said, I don't want to have an accident, not up in the sky like this. He said he'd never heard of anybody having an accident like that. <laughs> I said, I had. That's when we were living on Mary's Plate. Gold mine. We all had outside lamps. We all had them outside in those days on Mary's Plate. Anyhow, we had this old neighbour, old Mrs. Fothergill. And one day, I heard her shouting for help. Oh, so there you I are. I've been looking for you where all her voice was Smith. coming from. And then I realised... Oh, hello, now. You Mark, know, the moment you, I turn my back, she's off now, visiting. But it wasn't funny at the time. We had to get the garden boy to oh, help Mom. get her out of there. Well, no harm done, but oh, the embarrassment for poor Mrs. Fothergill. Mom! Nelly, you remember when old Mrs. Fothergill fell out of yes, the outside? Yes, Come along, Mom. I've been hunting for you all over the place. You know, I didn't know where on earth she'd got to. I thought you were going on a study tour. After the ski holiday. Or how about a dashing young guardsman, all seven feet tall in boots and busby? Hey, where's the famous repartee? Skiing, hey? Hiking in the Lake District. <laughs> oh, well. I'll be thinking of you when I'm sweating it out in the stove half a mile down there somewhere. <gasps> oh, Nick Wilmot, I do believe you're feeling sorry for yourself. Wendy, I didn't have to do my prac on Village Reef, you know. I could have gone to the West Rand or the Free State. The way all the action is. All the new dramatic developments in... Deep level mining. You mean you came here because of me? Oh, I didn't know. Hey, did I tell you what happened to me in the shop the other day? Uh-uh. Oh, cheeser. He was standing there and piling a whole lot of cans on top of one another, you know, like for a display thing. And as he was putting the last one on top, I crept up behind him slowly and I went, Wow! <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen him, his face. <laughs> hey, what's up? Oh. Adele, what's up? Oh. Hey, are you oh. having a baby? Look, what's happening? Oh. What's wrong, man? Oh. Oh. Adele. I think you better get a car out. Oh! Oh! Keys. Oh! oh. Hurry! Oh. I've got the case too. Now look, when you hear the car running, you... No! You go around the front, I'll meet you there. Let's go! <laughs> Don't you remember what happened when she invited the two of us there for tea last year? Well, what on earth? I started the engine and sort of flew out of my hands. I'm sorry. Not a very promising start to your career as a pilot. No, you can relax, Mum. I'm not going to the Air Force. 
Dr. De Villiers is in no way I'll get through the medical. He's arranged an appointment for me to go and see an oculist. He says he can't understand why I'm not wearing glasses. But there's never been anything wrong with your eyes. I've been getting headaches when I read a lot. You play tennis and cricket? Dropped a few catches lately. We can get a second opinion, a specialist opinion. I sort of expected it. I just didn't tell you. Because I hoped. So, looks like the army after all. <laughs> Don't worry about the plane. It's, it's nothing. Now look, if you want to pull a better one, I don't mind giving you a hand. It's, it's a good idea. We, we could try a hand at some competition flying. Yeah, I guess I'm fit enough to fly a model aeroplane. I just don't understand. Ah, oh, it was a false alarm, that's all. Yeah, but I mean, you know. Dr. De Villiers says it often happens. Contractions start, and then they stop. Probably wasn't even contractions. Yes. It's getting light already, Matt. Just look at it. Fantastic. Sometimes I think you want to make it blue. You must look like you with blue eyes and curly hair. And then again, I think you know. And all the young and the old, the yeah. life and will just carry on. So take a good look and you'll see that the ordinary people like you and me feel free to come.